Good afternoon! I'm back with another video regarding the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro X AMD version. I've now had this computer for about one day and uh, I must say that I really enjoy the high build quality of this laptop and I, I will definitely keep it. The aluminium casing, the keyboard and the trackpad is awesome. And uh, the screen, um, bear in mind that I am in no way an expert on this matter, but uh, from my point of view it's excellent and I really do enjoy the anti-glare version uh, of the screen. In terms of battery life, I've gotten the question in the comments and I would say that 7 to 6 hours with mixed use, uh, you know, medium brightness on the screen is perfectly attainable. One feature that has been boosted by Lenovo concerning the Pro X series is the X Power feature. The X Power feature seeks to strike the optimal balance between performance, power and cooling by dynamically switching based on the need between the CPU and the GPU and to some extent that, that's already prevalent in both AMD and uh, Nvidia uh, GPUs in terms of uh, being able to request and get more power when it's needed. To give some more information and some actual data on this I have done some tests both uh, with um, uh, PC Mark 10 for productivity but especially regarding uh, uh, 3D Mark Firestrike to look at the three options between performance, IntelliCool, I believe it's named in English and uh, Battery Saver to see uh, how much power the GPU draws, how much power the CPU draws, um, and also the, the total TDP of the CPU and GPU. And also just comparing the actual performance results, also the temps for each of these modes. Starting off with PC Mark 10, which is a overall productivity benchmark, You're looking at video conferencing, the office suite, web browsing, um, lighter content creation and such. The total score is in the yellow bar and the three subcategories are shown in grey. Essentials and productivity is mainly CPU constrained, um, but where content creation also taps into the GPU. What's interesting here is that the intelligent cooling setting actually scored higher than the performance mode. This might be a difference that would be averaged out with multiple tests, but I'm very glad to see this and to see that the intelligent cooling solution doesn't really sacrifice anything in terms of productivity. Also what's interesting is that the battery saver mode almost manages to retain essentials and productivity scores, but it does lose a lot due to the poor content creation score, which is likely due to a starving GPU. Nevertheless, strong points for Ryzen and its uh, energy efficiency and also good to know that running on battery saver won't really sacrifice a lot in terms of general productivity. Moving on to the 3D Mark Firestrike results and uh, this is also a major interest for me as I do intend to do some casual gaming on this laptop as well. Performance mode provides the highest TDP of around 70 watts for the GPU and CPU combined and therefore attains the highest scores. The intelligent cooling mode does sacrifice around 14% in terms of the GPU score but only loses 6% in the CPU score. Battery mode is not recommended to play anything but the lightest games even though it certainly delivers on the CPU score. Up next, we see the CPU and GPU power draw visualized during the Firestrike run in performance mode. It's very clear that the power budget is distributed where it is needed. The RTX 3050 have a standard TDP of 40 watts with boost up to 55 watts, which it does use during the both GPU tests. During the CPU test, it's instead the Ryzen processor who is allowed to run free, well exceeding its TDP of 35 watts and gets very close to 60 watts. During the combined tests, it's a joint effort, but the GPU does require more power. In the next page, I have combined the total GPU and CPU power consumption to show the total TDP for each power mode. Performance does utilize the most power with 70 watts in Fire Strike, but I did see it top out at 75 watts during Time Spy. The intelligent 
cooling mode runs at 50 to 60 watts, which is quite impressive uh, in relation to the benchmark scores that it did receive. And battery runs at 20 to 25 watts. Following up on that slide, we also see the peak power drop per GPU and CPU in each mode during a fire strike. Battery runs at a maximum of 15 to 14 watts for CPU and GPU respectively. The intelligent cooling solution runs at 40 watts for the CPU and 35 watts for the GPU at the most. And performance sees a 58 watt for the CPU and 54 watts for the GPU. Those powers used also results in heat and uh, during the runs we see the performance maxing out at around 80 degrees, the intelligent cooling solution 70 degrees and battery mode around 60 degrees and these are average temps for both the GPU and CPU. Do keep in mind that the Fire Strike benchmarks are fairly short in time, so this might equate to, to higher average temperatures uh, during an extended run. I also tried to raise the laptop around 3 cm for high performance, and we do see a gain, not a huge one, but uh, definitely uh, an effect in terms of providing that extra airflow for the computer. So. To round off with some early conclusions, um, I'm very positive. I am positive in terms of the performance and as I said previously, the overall build quality. The intelligent cooling option delivers good performance. I mean, with the, the lower TDP, uh, we still see only a 12% drop in the total 3D Mark Fire Strike score, and that's using 28% less power. I would however prefer an option in Lenovo Vantage in terms of just fine tuning the settings because we only got three options and I see big potential in terms of just fine tuning the exact budget for the CPU um, because I won't use that to as big an extent so being able to, to fine tune that would be great. The fan noise is also fine acceptable for a laptop this slim with this hardware. Uh, the battery mode is nearly inaudible in, in all cases, even though we are running a benchmark, but that's also due to the 20 to 25 watt TDP. The intelligent cooling benchmark maxes out at around 44 decibels. Performance mode uh, shows a slight increase, around 46 to 48, but they often do average around the same noise level, so it's not a huge difference, even though each decibel added uh, does impact quite a lot in the perceptible uh, sound it makes. And again, in terms of power efficiency, the next generation of Ryzen laptops has excellent performance at lower powers. Even though they are on the same node as the 5000 series, it does show improvements uh, also concerning the battery life. Just the performance in the PC Mark 10 running on battery mode shows that it's very much possible to run on fairly low power whilst retaining excellent performance for productivity and um, such tasks. Um, and it would be fantastic to be able to fine tune the CPU power draw in Lenovo apps or, or even in Windows or through, through Ryzen. There are options that are also my next possible steps to review. I have started to review the CPU boost modes, uh, which is contained in the power plants. Or rather, you can activate through Reg Edit the option to be able to fine tune the aggressive CPU boost. So we can have it as aggressive, we can have it as active, or also disabled to to see the, the real world performance hits and also the, the, the power efficiency gains uh, we could attain through that. I don't like it too much however because it's a fairly blunt tool and in some instances I do want it to be able to boost. I will also check the performance for the Ryzen 6800HS at different TDP levels. I'm going to use a third party application to be able to fine tune that and I will also uh, explore the RTX 3050 undervolting potential. This is a very new laptop, so there might also be performance tuning from Lenovo's side. And uh, yeah, I'm very interested in hearing your thoughts and opinions on the laptop. So 
please feel free to leave any comments, likes uh, in terms of the video and also if you have any outstanding questions. Well, <laughs> I do believe that you may have many due to the, the overall lack of reviews on the laptop, but um, feel free to hit me up if you have any questions. So that's everything from me and um, yeah, hope it have given you some insights into the, the power plants and also the, the performance you can expect. I'm sorry for not having included any comparative benchmarks, but hopefully you're able to, to take the fire strike results and then compare it online. Oh, by the way, I did edit this video on the laptop. Yeah, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Take care.